Yep, you're good. Thank you. That's good. All right. So what I want to do now is I want to walk through the data verification process. Um, in order to ensure that all of the data from existing licensees is appropriately captured in the system, we need for those licensees to go in and to submit a one-time data verification. I'm going to walk through that process. We're at the home screen, and this is, of course, after I've already created my login. I have my credentials, um, my uh, you know username, password. I'm logged into the user portal. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to go and create a new application. In this instance, I am going to do a home care agency data verification. So I'll select home care agency. I'll click next. Now, um, you know, I'm at my application subtype screen. This is going to ask me what type of application do I want to fill out? Do I want to do an initial renewal, uh, change, or data verification? Of course, I'm going to select data verification. And it can take me to the next screen here. In order to go forward with this data verification, I must first enter a good license number. So I've got a license number for a home care agency. Here. And I'm going to enter that. Actually, here's what I'll do first. I'll put in a license number that I, that's not actually a license number. This is not a real license number. It's not a good license number. It's not a good test license number. When I click next, I'm going to get an error message. As I should. This is telling me that the system does not recognize that license number, nor should it because it's not an actual license number in our system. So I'm going to have to go back and I'm going to have to actually enter a good license number. So once I've done that, I can click next. And the next screen is going to show me the facility for which I've entered that license number. It's basically asking me, is this the correct facility? So I can you know, verify that that is, in fact, the facility for which I want to create the license or uh, do the submit the data verification. If that's not so, if I've entered an incorrect license number, something's not quite right, I can go back and re-enter. Um, if that does not work, I can go to my support and I can submit a support ticket to get in contact with the Office of um, Facilities and say, hey, something's going on here. Uh, we don't anticipate that, but obviously if that happens, then what the applicant would want to do at that point is go back and try again. But what we've what we've done is we know we've entered a good license number. We hit next. We verify or we validate this is in fact the appropriate facility, and we're going to go next. You'll notice that these or many of these fields are pre-populated. So again, what this process is for to is a to validate the information that we already have. If the information is pre-existing, if we've already got that data in the system, it should pre-populate here. If something has changed, if an address or a phone number, email address has changed here, then we want to we want to we 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 have an opportunity to make that adjustment. If there is something that did not pre-populate, like a telephone number, then our responsibility as applicants is to provide that. So again, it's it's to validate pre-existing information that is pre-populated to change anything that needs to be changed and to fill in data that's not there. I will do that. And the contact information. to the next screen. So in this particular application, I need to specify which services that we provide, and I'll just select a few here.
So here, applicant owner information. The first question, and it's it's a required field, is asking us to specify what type of, of organization is this, right? And then subsequently, we're having to fill out different data associated with those uh, business types. I'm going to select limited partnership. If I click other, it's going to ask me to specify what other type of uh, business is it. But for here, I'll just put the information associated with limited partnership. So I need to uh, upload a certificate of good standing here. And I'll just slide one over there. Corporation status, these are not required. I'll go ahead and put some information in there. For the property um, ownership question, properties and buildings, you'll notice that when I, when I put leased slash rented, I had to fill out additional data. If the property is leased or rented, who's the property owner? If I were to select owned, then I do not have to do that. And similarly, if I answer yes, that the agency is in fact managed by someone other than the applicant, then I need to provide information as far as who that is. If I select that the answer is no, then I do not have to do that. So those are some you know, specific questions relative to certain applications. Obviously, certain types of applications require different information, but that's generally how that goes. OK, so. I had stated that this was a limited partnership, so what I got to provide is some information specific to at least one partner. If I should see fit to add information for another partner or additional partners, I could click this box. And if I were to go save and next, it's going to bring up another screen just like this one. The difference is you're going to see number two here. And after that, if I would add an additional partner, you would see number three and so on and so forth. It's the same field, same screen. Let me enter a phone number because the system's going to tell me that I cannot move forward unless I do. All right. As for now, I'm not going to addition, uh, add any additional partners, but that's what I would do. This is a box that I would click if I wanted to. So for now, we'll just click Save and Next. Director's information. We need information from the director or for the director. Let's say. And these are additional mandatory questions. Is the director a licensed physician? Right. Is the director a registered nurse, a licensed registered nurse? And this is a date field. When did the person begin employment with the facility as their director? What we'll want to do is we'll want to click this button, this calendar button, and we'll want to select a date. We can scroll months. You can scroll years. So we'll just go May 1st, 2009 is when they begin. Additional questions. Does the director have training experience? Sure. Will the director serve as director of any other health care facility? Well, say no. If so, 
we need to provide as an applicant information relative to those other facilities, but we're going to select no. We'll move on forward. Do you or does the facility have liability insurance? In an initial application, if I select yes, I'm going to have to provide documentation relative to the liability insurance. In a data verification scenario, I don't have to um, I don't have to upload any documents at this time. No document uploading for data verification. I'll click next. And then I'll certify. Okay. And all this is is me attesting to the fact that everything that I've entered, all of the data that I've entered and all of the data that I saw, everything that was pre-populated and the data that I changed or entered for the first time is true to my knowledge. I'll click submit. And that's 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 my submission. There is no payment associated with data verification. All we want for um, all we as licensees want to be able to do for the facilities team is to in fact verify that again everything that that is in the system for us is correct. If not, we can change it there in those editable fields. And anything that did not populate, if there's a telephone number, an email address, an address that for some reason was not captured in this ver verification, we would need to provide that at this time. Once we've done that, we can hit close. And once we submit, once we close it out, this takes us back to our home screen. And that is the data verification process. All right, everybody okay? How we feel?